Hey everyone, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate demo for the piece I call What's He Up To? So I'm still playing catch up here with some pieces that were done a little bit ago, but here is a Draw This In Your Style from Patrick Belanovsky, which I thought was really fun and really different from things that I normally do, so I thought I'd take it on and then also do more things that I usually don't do, just a, a different way of trying to uh, actually create the art with different techniques go for kind of like a different overall look now as you know because a lot of these lately have been draw this in your style pieces because that's just been what i've been in the mood to do uh, i also try to either choose like what am i going to bring the to the table that is maybe uniquely me or what am i going to push on myself stylistically this was one of the ones where I think that there's some shape decisions that are probably things I would normally do, uh, but then I'm experimenting with the media, trying to make it look like it is more of this like haphazard natural media thing, uh, and that was kind of my intention from the very beginning, but not exactly what it was. I didn't know I was going to land on exactly the look and feel, but I knew that I wanted it to be something like that. So you can see here at the sketch stage, Everything always comes down to the sketch stage as far as what are the shapes, what's the interesting thing I'm going to do here, can I, shape-wise, um, can I bring like an attitude to this or can I bring an energy to this that is just something different, uh, different from the original. And so that's kind of what the spirit was here. It was like, okay, well, the way he's got his, the character proportions are more squashed than what I have here. In fact, I would say his aren't squashed, mine are elongated. And so, um, and then he's also a little bit forward movement and like a little hunched and what I decided to do was actually just go for something that was way more vertical and I wanted to kind of key in on there were aspects of the character that kind of seemed like a bad guy I don't know if it was a bad guy but then I kind of wanted to just play into that I like the idea of this almost like looking back over his shoulder kind of vibe like somebody just said his name and he's like gonna do one of those villainy things where he's like you know somebody somebody w talking to me you know some I don't know it's early I'm recording this early in the morning my brain's not working so anyways some sort of clever thing uh, so when it comes to the techniques used here I did all the sketching the initial sketching with the fat pencil and then I did the line work with the rough uh, pen the rough inking pen so if you grab my brush pack down below which again is really small it's totally free just download it um, you will see basically everything that I use here on the line side once we get to the actual painting I'm kind of just leveraging a bunch of random junk from the Procreate toolkit. Uh, so you can see right here, we're going really loose with the hair, just trying to maintain this kind of like brushy kind of energy. And the thing that's really interesting, I think about the way this piece ultimately comes out is it's got paint, but it's also got um, half tone and it's got line, like it's like ink. So it almost looks like a character in some ways that was drawn in like an old comic. And then somebody came in over it later and like put all this paint over the top of it. And that kind of like just chaos and, and, you know, lack of real specific direction, more just like this chaos, I think is really cool. Someone the other day actually thought that it was dubious that I was offering a brush pack for free because they said brush packs are never for free. So it, I started to laugh thinking about the idea of putting it up for sale somewhere, but also keeping it for free so that if people don't trust free brushes, they can just, you know. Oh, so what I did here for the um, painting was I used one of the existing brushes, I think it's a charcoal brush, but I can't really remember. And then I cranked up the color variation a little bit so that I could get like these random haphazard moments where the colors just kind of shift. That's something that's already in my rebuilt turpentine brush that's in my brush pack, uh, but then I also added it here. It's more subtle in the turpentine brush that I made, uh, and it's it's more pronounced here. I wanted to key in on some of the color choices that Patri made, so I also have, uh, some of the blue in here and the, and there's just there's just some subtle color variation in here that I felt like keyed in on the original. So all of these colors are sitting underneath the line layer. You can see that the roughest of sketch lines are gone. I just went with the inks. Uh, although I might bring them back in. I'm honestly, I can't remember, but we'll see. We'll see together. Uh, but you'll see what's really important here that's different from what I normally do is I'm painting outside the lines. I made a real conscious decision once I started laying down the paint that I wasn't going to be precious about it. And I was going to go in later with some paint and paint on top of those paints uh, with the background color so that I could get a messier, more 
natural looking paint situation. So while I'm going outside of the lines here, I am going to pull it back a little bit by painting on top, but I want it to stay messy. Like that is kind of the point here. So yeah, right now I'm throwing in all of these little variations on his head using the same way that I normally do where I'm like putting some dark purpley color and reducing the opacity and putting some lip color and reducing the opacity or adjusting it. Same thing with the nose. So all of that is fairly standard with uh, just additional layers that I'm throwing on top. Now this video is going to be fairly quick because the creation of this was fairly quick. I would say the actual work that went into here was more of the decisions around what the techniques were going to be and in the moment trying to make little calls here or there. The one thing that I would say doesn't really show up in the time lapse is the moments where you're just kind of sitting staring at the canvas trying to figure out your next action, which I would say happened quite a bit in this one because I was trying to figure out what was too much and what was not enough as far as style and messiness and painterliness and all these types of things. So you can see we did that cleanup around the edges. We added a little bit more mess around the hair because I thought that would be cool to like accentuate the fact that that's hair. Um, we're putting a shadowy situation on him, but I eventually decide that that's not actually that cool to me. I like the fact that it was stark. I like the fact that it had this just like unprecious uh, vibe to it and I wanted to keep that so I felt that by adding some of that lighting that wasn't just in the black inks it was making it look like I was thinking too much about it and that was going to take away from the kind of haphazard chaos that I was going for here. Now, there are some layers here that are going to get the halftone filter, which is in Procreate. You can see that underneath other paint passes that don't have the halftone filter. Um, you can also see that we're throwing in uh, some duplicates of the lines in the background to try and show like this aspect of like a canvas that's been reworked kind of thing. And right here is the final one. Now, the thing that I think I want you to like kind of take away from what this was is this isn't me following my normal process. You guys, when you watch this channel, you see me do my process a lot. You've seen a few versions of my process, but they, they happen over and over again because building that game plan is good for building efficiency. On something like this, I think it's good to stretch yourself every now and then, question some aspects of your process, and see what more you can do or what you can try and kind of, you know, see where you end up. Now, here's the sketch again. The sketch actually where the sort of fundamental interest, I think, comes from the piece. This character, the way his shapes are driven, the just there's aspects of this that is the foundation. And you wouldn't actually, I think, have fun in the final piece, which is right here, um, unless that was there. The rest of this is kind of bells and whistles, just adding some extra flavor on. Uh, but then it's all based off of like a core character drawing that I think is uh, fairly strong. So shout outs to Petri for the original Draw This In Your Style challenge. It was a lot of fun. I love doing these. And uh, thanks to you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting like or subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.